Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today we're going to be tackling something that a lot of you have been requesting when we're talking about watches and magnetism. Uh, we'll take this little guy and we'll magnetize it. We'll check its timing. We'll demagnetize it. We'll check its timing again. Uh, magnetization is something that all automatic watches are susceptible to. Uh, you know, unless you have a really, really heavy-duty uh, anti-magnetic watch like a Milgauss or, or something along those lines. The main problem is that all, I shouldn't say all, but many automatic watches, especially in the affordable sector, are composed of metal. And all metals, even if they are not magnetic, can still become slightly magnetized, and that causes the spring to oscillate faster and the watch to run a lot faster. Uh, and you can try to regulate it, and you'll chase your tail around because it'll never regulate. Uh, I have a new tool to show you. I bought a time grapher. Uh, a friend of mine had bought me one of those Frederick Constant little clip-on thingies uh, that you use with your phone, and I was so intrigued by that that I then went out and bought a time grapher. Uh, it's a really cool instrument if you're, uh, you know, if you're really deep into the hobby. Uh, I, I like using it. Uh, it's, it's kind of big and bulky, and I'll show it to you in a few minutes. Uh, but anyway, so magnetism is something that we all have to be aware of. You know, back when computer monitors were CRTs, you know, the big, big things that were really deep, uh, or your TV screen, you know, had had a cathode ray tube in it. You know, we had to be really concerned about magnetism there. You know, you'd put your watch on top of your. Uh, computer monitor and it would become magnetized. I mean, we're getting away from magnets in, in that sense, but your alarm clock speaker on your desk, uh, you know, on, on your night table or a catch on a folio or something that closes, even though those are small, weak magnets, uh, magnetic effects are cumulative. So if you put something on a magnet and you leave it there overnight, you take it off, you wear the watch the next day, the next night you do it again, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, you are going to eventually magnetize the watch, no matter how weak or strong the, ma the magnet is. Uh, so, really, the takeaway is you should keep your watches away from magnets. Uh, you know, but if you can't, there are demagnetizers. You know, and usually a demagnetizer is also a magnetizer because they work on the same principle. So, anyway, like I said, we're going to take this Orient Ray that I've got in the uh, parts bin that I've been using for movement parts, but it operates. Uh, we're going to time it. We're going to mag it. We're going to time it again, see what happens. We're going to demag it, and then we're going to time it again to see if we can get it back uh, kind of the way it was operating before we started. I'll do my own wrist check on one wrist. I'm wearing the Squally 50 Atmos Polished Blue, and on the other, I've got the Seiko Military 42 millimeter version, the uh, SNZG15. It's a cool little watch. Well, it's not that little. You know, the SNK809 is little. This one's got a, a nicer size to it, uh, but still a, a great watch. So enough with the wrist check, let's get over to the table and take a look at watches and magnets. So in front of you here, I have an Orient Ray. Like I said, I pulled it out of uh, my junk box. I had a note on it that says works, but that just means I'll scavenge parts from it. Uh, so, but, but I did test it, and it's got some issues, but its accuracy is pretty decent. So it's on the time graph. I'm just going to flip it up so that we're dealing in the dial-up position. And I've got the time graph set up, and I'm going to start it. And I believe I have it muted, so you won't hear it ticking, but you can listen to it. It gets very annoying after a while. But it picks up the um, the beat rate of the watch, 21,600 uh, beats per hour. It's showing me the rate around every, uh, it averages it out about every four seconds or so. Uh, so it started out at zero, minus six, minus six. It's going to keep going, and then it's got some other parameters here, and... It's a topic for another watch and learn. The beat rate, as I said, it's got the beat error, which in this case, this is pretty high. It's got the amplitude, which is also a little bit messed up. Uh, but we're really just looking at the rate, and that's why I'm using the time graph for here, just so we can check out the rate. So what I'm going to do is we're going to stop it. So you can see it's running. Well, I guess it's running pretty good. I had it running for a little while before I started filming, and it's been in the plus five to six range and the minus five to six range. So it, it is running fairly decently. Uh, so there it goes, just went to minus five. So it's running a little bit irregular. But again, this isn't a perfect watch. Like I said, I just, I pulled it out of, you know, a parts bin. Uh, so we're going to stop the timing. And what I'll do next is I'll clear this away and we'll plug in a magnetizer, demagnetizer unit, and we will magnetize the watch. Then we'll put it back on the time grapher and we'll see the results. 
So this is my magnetizer demagnetizer. Uh, I picked it up probably about 10 years ago or so. It's fairly old. It's a very high powered device. It's obviously electric. You see the cord coming out the back. It's a very strong cord. Uh, you can read some of the specifications if you can see the sticker. Uh, but the takeaway here is that you can, if you look inside, you can maybe see the coil. It's a very powerful electromagnet. And if you use it for more than, I think about 10 seconds or so of constant duty cycle, uh, it will turn off because it gets so hot and it won't run. It's, you got to wait till it cools down. This is akin to what they use in a magnet factory to create magnets. They'll take a piece of iron, they'll put it on a table, they'll run an extremely high current uh, through the iron, uh, you know, th through the table that the iron is sitting on, and everything gets aligned and it becomes magnetized. So this is a loop magnetizer. So there's a coil running this way. And when we press the red button, a very large current will flow through the coil, almost like a dead, like a dead short. Uh, so I'm going to take the watch, and to magnetize an item, you actually just leave it inside, and you don't move it. And you hold the button down. And I can hear it working. I'm going to press it for about five seconds. I'm going to let go. I'm going to do it again. And then I'm going to let go. I'm going to do it one more time for good measure. Notice I am not wearing any watches or anything. You have to keep anything sensitive away from this thing because it really creates a very powerful magnetic field. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to wind it up. You know, make sure it's still wound, right? And then we'll switch it up again and we'll put the time grapher back out and we'll see what the timing results are. So now we're back on the tester and you can see as time goes on, it's slowly taking off. It's now doing plus 16, plus 18. I mean, it'll go back and forth as it starts to average out over, you know, every four seconds or so. But you can see it's much faster than it was before, before we were in the, what, plus or minus five second range. Now we're in the 20 second range. And that was just a, you know, a quick hop on the electromagnet, you know, for 10 seconds. So you can imagine if you put this near a magnetic source, let's say an alarm clock speaker or a magnetic catch on an iPad case or something, and you let it sit there overnight, every night, end on end. So magnetic effects are cumulative. So over time, it just becomes magnetized. What's happening is the balance spring. It's a, I'll stop it so we can hear, stop hearing the annoying sound. The balance spring is a coil. You know, it's a round coil. And when you magnetize it, it gets closer together. And when it wants to oscillate, you've basically made it a shorter spring. So it oscillates a lot faster. Now you could also probably see uh, the amplitude change, the beat error didn't change much because that's really not, has, had, does not have much to do with magnetism. Um, but we affected the watch um, greatly. So what I like to do now is use the magnetizer to demagnetize the watch, and then we'll put it back on, and we'll see the results, and hopefully the watch comes back down to a normal running rate. So what magnetizes also demagnetizes, whereas before we put it in here, we pressed the button, we held it down, took our finger off the button, took it out, so the current was aligning all of the uh, magnetic poles of the molecules or the atoms, and you know basically turn it into a magnet. So to get it to demagnetize, we need to randomize the process. You do the same, it's the same button, it's the same machine, but instead what we'll do is we hold it in the middle, hold down the button, and we draw it away one to two feet slowly. And what that's doing is it's, it's basically screwing up the, uh, the pieces inside and making them all go random again. So I do it one, I do it two, and I do it a third time. And that's it. And now it should be demagnetized. Of course, now we're demagging through the watch case. You know, the case is steel. If you had an anti-magnetic watch, you know, even anti-magnetic watches over time, you know, can become magnetized. I mean, maybe if it's not a really, really well-built one. But some of your dive watches are held to, uh, you know, low-level anti-magnetic uh, standards. Uh, so over time, they can they can become magnetized. So let's uh, let's see what's going on on the time grapher. So here we are back in the setup, and we've put it on the time grapher again. I don't want to touch it, and we'll see how it performs. So definitely, it's going slower already, uh, plus six right now. And as time goes on, it will keep averaging itself down or averaging itself up, depending on how fast it's going to go. 
but you can see already that it is certainly, certainly much, much slower and certainly much closer to what we had beforehand. Um, this watch obviously needs more tender love and care than uh, just a simple uh, demagnetizing, as you can tell by the beat error, uh, and the amplitude is way off. But at least for now, its timing has come back to you know more of what we were before we magnetized it. You know maybe it can benefit from a little more demagnetizing as it's still running just a little bit faster than it was when we started, uh, plus eight, plus nine. But de we definitely gained at least ten seconds. Uh, you know the case of the watch being steel, you know, works against us when we try to you know demag it, or even you know when you try to magnetize it. But when you try to demagnetize it, you have to fight against. Uh, the stainless steel, which is generally, you know, non-magnetic to begin with. Uh, if you took the movement out of the watch, you know, decased it and, and we tried to magnetize it, uh, it would really, it would really magnetize real quick and it would demag quick as well. Uh, so I'm going to stop it anyway. So, uh, this has been Mark from longislandwatch.com with another episode of watch and learn, trying to teach you a little bit about watches and magnetism, and you should keep your automatic and mechanical watches away from magnets uh, without a doubt. Uh, please like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you.